Hi, I'm Sabrina Song, and today I'm going to talk about a famous 18th century painting called An Experiment on a Bird in the Air Pump by Joseph Wright. The 18th century in Europe was a period of intellectual, social, and political development in the form of a movement called Enlightenment. An important portion of the Enlightenment was the scientific advancements made during the time. Science and reason were emphasized over faith and superstition, and many scientific achievements were made in physics, mathematics, astronomy, and biology. Among the people influenced by the Enlightenment was Joseph Wright, the painter of an experiment on a bird in the air pump. Wright was born in 1734 in Derby, England, to a middle-class family of lawyers. Due to his family's position in the social structure of Britain, he was able to pursue a career of his liking, and Wright chose to train in portrait painting. In the 18th century, London was the biggest city in England, perhaps even the entire Europe. With a population of almost half a million, the city was a concentration of intellectuals of many kinds, including painters. In fact, all the well-known English painters of the time lived in London. There, Wright was able to train as a portrait painter. Eventually, he became very good at painting, and when he returned to his hometown in Derby after his training, he was able to find a steady stream of clients. He became the first major English painter to base his career outside of London. With many clients to paint portraits for, Wright was able to earn extra money and make time for leisure and pursue his other interests such as science. During the 18th century, intellectuals of similar interests liked to get together and form different clubs where they would meet, eat lots of food, and discuss their interests. Wright became good friends with many members of one club called the Lunar Society of Birmingham. The Lunar Society was a club of industrialists and scientists who met regularly between 1765 and 1813 on Nights of the Full Moon, which is how they got their name. One may think that they had something to do with werewolves, but the real reason why they met on nights of the full moon because it was safer to walk home under the moonlight during a time before the invention of street lights. Because of Wright's involvement with the members of the Lunar Society, he was able to attend their meetings and observe the latest advancements in science and alchemy. Wright began to use these meetings as inspiration for his paintings. His three most famous paintings are all based on these meetings, such as The Alchemist Discovering Phosphorus, A Philosopher Lecturing in the Ore, and finally, An Experiment on a Bird in the Air Pump, where the full moon can actually be seen through the window on the right. Wright named all three paintings in the same fashion, direct and simple, labeling it exactly what it is, although at first it appears uncreative and even boring. I think that Wright may have named these paintings in this manner because he wanted them to be like recordings of these experiments, and like the experiment, the painting should be orderly and have a more technical name. During the 18th century, most paintings were of noble people or scenes of nature. Subjects like science experiments were scarce and hard to portray in an artistic manner. Because Wright was able to depict these experiments accurately while retaining their artistic value, he became very famous through these paintings as they distinguished him from other artists of his time. Still, his main source of income still came from portrait paintings, and very few people bought his other paintings at the time. One of his most famous paintings is an experiment on a bird in the air pump. In this painting, a man hires a lecturer into his house to give a scientific demonstration to his family and friends. This man is fairly well-to-do. The bird in the air pump is his pet cockatoo, an expensive but commonly owned bird that many rich people had at the time. During the 18th century, many people like him would pay traveling scientists to perform experiments in their homes. These lecturers were not like modern scientists as we know. Instead of just doing the experiment, their job was also to perform the process and create as much drama as possible to entertain the audience and capture their attention. The experiment in question were often done many, many times before by many different lecturers all around Europe. One of the most popular was the air pump experiment. The air pump, also known as a vacuum chamber, was created in the mid-17th century by a man named Robert Boyle, and it proved that air has pressure and could be removed from a space, and that all living things needed air to survive. The air pump in this painting consists of a glass bowl on a tall stand, connected by a rubber tube to brass cylindrical pipes with a crank. 
By turning the crank, the pump begins to extract air out of the glass bowl the cockatoo is in. Quickly, the cockatoo begins to struggle for air and flail its wings as seen in the painting. By turning the knob at the top of the glass, the lecturer can let air back into the glass bowl, saving the bird. Through this experiment, the lecturer teaches the audience that air can be removed from a vessel, and through the bird's struggle, he showed that all living things needed air, even if air could not be seen. At this moment, all the spectators in the room react differently to the experiment. This is a moment where the performance climaxes and the lecturer decides whether the bird lives or dies. Tis right, the two daughters cower away in fear. The younger girl does not understand death, while the older girl is scared of death. They both feel empathy for the bird. Above them, their father tries to encourage them to keep watching the experiment, hoping that they can learn something today about life and death and science, or maybe just so they do not waste his money. Beside them is an older man leaning on his cane. He seems to be contemplating something philosophical. To the right of the lecture are two lovers who are too distracted by each other to care about the experiment. Below them is a young boy in his teens. He leans toward the experiment in curiosity. Beside him is a grown man who watches without emotion on his face. He has a watch in his hand, timing when the bird will die. In the center is the lecturer. He wears a red robe with his hair disheveled. Clearly, he cares more about science and its experiments than taking detailed care of himself or other matters. He looks a bit like a mad scientist or sort of like Albert Einstein. In front of the air pump on the table is a candle hidden behind a large glass cup. The black object inside the cup is believed to either be a diseased human skull or an animal lung with a straw stuck in it to show the inflation and deflation of the lungs in animals. Behind the cup is a candle that acts as the main source of light for the entire painting. With this candle, Joseph Wright uses a painting technique called chiaroscuro, which is a use of strong contrast between light and dark, as seen in the painting where characters are lit up in the center while the corners and backdrop are much darker. Joseph Wright is very famous for his prominent use of this technique, as seen in many of his other paintings where the light is very focused in one place, while the surroundings are dark. He was even dubbed the best painter of artificial light in his day because of his many candlelit scenes. Although there are many different interpretations of the deeper meaning of the painting, I believe that Wright is trying to portray the different reactions that people have in regards to science and the enlightenment. The light in the center draws the audience to the science experiment, and the enlightenment by ironically using light. The couple on the left represent the people who are indifferent to science and the innovations. They are too absorbed in their love to care about anything else. The boy next to them is very curious and focused. He wants to know what happens next and what science will bring for the future and all the new discoveries that will take place. He thinks that it's fun and enjoyable. The man next to him is a representation of the people who react to the experiment logically and emotionlessly. He hopes to obtain numbers and information from the science, maybe so that it will teach him something or benefit his life. The two girls represent the people who fear the damage that science can do in the future, whether it's strong weapons or damaging chemicals. They are the people who fear that science will be used for the wrong causes and cause harm to their lives. Their father represents the people who want to use science to educate others and the next generation, which in this painting is his two daughters, who he is teaching about air and life and death of animals. Next to them is the old man, who represents the people that contemplate the deeper meaning behind science. He may relate this experiment to questions of life and death or how it relates to religion and human existence. In the center, the lecture is seen as an extension of the science experiment and the enlightenment in science, and he can either be viewed as a scientist who knows what he's doing or just a crazy lunatic. He has his hand on the knob, controlling the life of the bird. This could also mean that scientists like him control the future of our world through technologies and innovations. He looks toward us in the audience of the painting, and he reaches his hand out toward us as if he's asking us to decide whether he will make science benefit our lives or damage our lives. He's asking us to decide whether he turns the knob or not. Today, almost 300 years later, 
Joseph Wright's paintings of these scientific demonstrations have gained much more exposure than they did in the 18th century, and an experiment on a bird in the air pump is now located in the National Gallery in London. You can go there to see the 6 feet by 8 feet painting and experience the state of science during the Enlightenment, while still being able to enjoy a beautiful piece of artwork refined by Joseph Wright's chiaroscuro and a deeper meaning that you can discover and interpret yourself.